should think about is full cycle is a period, right? A period is by definition how long it takes to make a full cycle. And the formula for period is what? What is at Joven from period four? From period one, are we awake? Period one, are we awake, guys? Let's see. Mm. Mm. Melissa, are you here today? How about you? Do you know the answer? Good job. It's 2 pi over b, right? So period is equal to 2 pi over b. So our a is 3. That's not our b, damn it. Our b is 2. Here's our b. So b equals 2. So we're literally just going to be plugging in 2. So it's going to be 2 pi over 2. The 2's cancel out because 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1 pi is the same thing as just pi. Right? So the final answer is how many full cycles of this function appear in pi radians? Um, a period is how long it takes to make a full cycle, and so there's one full cycle in pi radians. Or you can graph it. Up to you. Um, as soon as I see a log on one side and a number on the other side, I should think of circle of log. When I do that, I think of Drake, uh, started from the bottom, right? So it's 8 raised to the 2 thirds power. I always think of this as like raised because it's the exponent. So it's 2 thirds um, and it's equal to, it's pointing to this x plus 1 thingy or whatever's inside these parentheses. And so um, a to the 2 thirds is something I can plug into my calculator, or we can use our handy dandy. We know that the 3, the three is the root, the 3 is the root, so that's the cube root. Um, this 8 goes on the inside, and it's raised to the second power. So the cube root of 8, what number times itself 3 times gives you 8? Oh, that's right, 2, because 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. So this is really 2 raised to the second power is equal to, and I'm just going to bring down x plus 1, needs more space. Uh, so 2 squared is equal to 4, and 4 equals x plus 1. Subtract 1 from both sides. I'm not going to write that because you guys are geniuses and you can figure that crap out. So x is equal to 3. I'm sorry, my voice is a little, like, coarse. It's the morning. Uh, but, you know, it's morning for all of us, right? All right, moving on. So uh, we've reviewed this for the last like two weeks. Uh, amplitude is height. It's always from the middle of the graph, right? The midline um, up or from the midline down, but the amplitude is always positive. It's the absolute value, right? The midline is what cuts the graph in half, the average of the graph. Uh, the frequency is how long it, like how many cycles there are from zero to two pi. So here, this is from zero to pi. We want from 0 to 2 pi. So between 0 and 2 pi, this is one cycle. There's going to be another cycle. I can't draw for crap this morning, but you know what? Uh, it's OK. You can cut my butt later. Uh, so there are two full cycles between 0 and 2 pi. So our frequency in this case is going to be 2. Our B, a B is going to be how long it takes to make a full cycle, right? So if I go ahead and erase what I just drew over here, um, hopefully all of this is recording, but if I erase that, this is where the cycle starts. It is not over here because it still has to go down and come back up. How long did that take or how many units? It's pi. So our period is equal to pi. Are we understanding this diagram over here? Are we getting it now? Okay. Are we? Are we? Depends. Period one, are we awake? Lewis, are we awake? Lewis, are we awake? Okay. Anyway, there's a couple of formulas. Amplitude is max minus the min divided by two. Midline is max plus min divided by two. It's like the average, right? Beep, beep, beep. Okay. Um, this should be written down somewhere, so pause the video. Stop the video. I'm not going to stop the video. You pause the video. Okay, moving on. So how are we, or when are we ever going to use this crap uh, we're actually using it right now. So, for example, this is the first day of the year, January 1st, right? Um, one full year is 365 days. This is how many hours of sunlight or daylight we have over the course of the year. And it's wavy, like a sine cosine graph, right? So if I take a look, uh, Christmas is somewhere closer to the end of the year. There are less hours of daylight because it is winter. Ah! 
about halfway throughout the year. I don't know why I just did that. About halfway through the year is like oh, uh, July, right? Uh, and that's when we have like the peak hours of daylight. Um, and you know, this is my face every morning when I'm like, I ask a question and then I get no answer. But this is when we're gonna use this stuff, all right? I'll move on. Uh, so tides in a particular bay, the hell is a bay? Bay can be modeled, oh, bay. Uh, can be modeled with an equation of the form D equals A cosine BT plus C. Okay, all of this is crap right now. I know that this is a cosine graph. Cosine, to refresh your memory, doesn't start at zero. It starts at one, drops down, and comes back up. Okay, that's the basic premise of cosine. <sighs> so it says the maximum depth of water is 36 feet. So I know that somewhere on this height, this is my height, Somewhere here at the top, near the top, it's going to be 36. The minimum depth is 22. So I can't put that here because that's like zero. So I'm going to be like, eh, there's a break in the graph somewhere. And then 22 is somewhere right about here. Obviously, this is a sketch, guys. A sketch. Okay. Um, so it says sketch the graph. So ignore my weirdness. Forgive me. But this is a sketch. So leave me the heck alone. Anyway. Um, and it says, so the, there's the max, so I know that my graph is going to start over here because it starts at 1, and my minimum point is going to be at 22. And it tide hits every 12 hours, so this is important. So every 12 hours, I'm going to be like, boom, there's a 12. Um, and it says I want to do this for two fill periods, so that's going to be a full cycle and then somewhere over here has to be another full cycle so I have to go 12 and then 24 I'm gonna go ahead and just like break this up so that's 6 uh, and this is gonna be oh between 12 and 24 right in the middle is 18 Ooh. okay so what's happening here I know that my graph starts it's gonna start over here and one full cycle means it's gonna end over here okay uh, it's going to drop, drop it like it's hot. Okay, it's going to drop down as low as 22 and it's going to come back up. So since this is a sketch, I'm going to just go ahead and go doop, doop. Leave me alone, Ian. This is the best I could do. All right. And then I'm going to do it again, right? Because it's only one cycle or one period. Uh, so that we have to draw two periods. So I'm going to go. Boop. Okay, again, this is a sketch. But I should know or remember that this point right here is going to be 24 slash 36. Ooh, pool. I should play real quick. I should be quiet. So it's going to be 24 slash 36 slash comma 36. This is going to be 12, 36, and this is going to be 0, 36. This point right here is going to be 6, comma 22. So I have enough. I've labeled some points. Um, have I done enough? It says, label the points on this curve that represents the high and low tide. Can you please leave me alone? Thank you. Uh, not you guys. My little messages. Anyway, it's very quite active today. Um, that represents high and low tide, right? So I've labeled some of them, but this one is 0, 36. I said it. I didn't label it, but let me just follow my own directions here. 1236. Low tide's going to be somewhere over here at this little, like, nipple area. That's going to be 18, comma. 22. So all these minimum points are the y is going to be 22. The maximum points, the y is going to be 36. Anyway, determine the a, b, and c. Okay. So to find out my a, which is my ham, my amplitude, my amplitude, I have to go from the midline. So you know, Ms. Regis, how about we change some, use some colors up in here? I'm scared. Get some color in our life. Uh, so I want to start from the middle of my graph. Damn, I can't draw for shit today. I mean, for, for anything today. Um, so somewhere over there, whatever. Um, I need to find the middle of 22 and 36. So if I go back to my handy dandy thingy, the midline is the max plus the min divided by two, right? So I can do that. The max is 36. So I'm gonna do 36 plus the min, which is 22 divided by 2. So 36 plus 22 divided by 2. What is that, guys? What is it? What is it? Anyone? 
Anyone? Can't do it in our head? That was my watch. What's happening? Um, so 3 plus 2 is 5. 6 plus 2 is 8. 58 divided by 2 is 29. Right? So it's going to be 29 is going to be our midline. Um, and, and that midline right there is our C. Right? So our C is equal to 29. It's the middle of the graph. It's our vertical shift, so it's going up 29. Announcement! Okay, anyway, uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to find our A. Okay, so our A, let's do our A in green because, you know, tall people are green. Um, so we, we're looking for this distance from the midline up. So I know that this number right here is 29, and I know that this number here is 36. Hmm, the math that comes to mind is I can subtract the two crafts. So 36 minus 29 is 7. So A is equal to 7. So I have my A, I have my C. I need to figure out my B. So it's kind of low key. It's kind of given to us uh, in a sense because it says that to make a full cycle, right, high tide is hit every 12 hours. That means that the period is equal to 12. Okay. That doesn't that helps us, but that's not the answer to our question. We want to know what our B is. So let's kind of work backwards, right? We have period is equal to 2 pi over B. So I can do some cross multiplying here. 12 times B is 12B, or B12, that's a vitamin. Uh, 2 pi times 1 is 2 pi. I have to get the B by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 12. Pew, pew. So B is equal to... 2 pi over 12, which can be reduced, right? 2 over 12 is 1 over 6. So this is the same thing as pi over 6. So b is equal to pi over 6. So here's my a, here's my b, and here's my c. All right. Uh, the last thing... Tanker bolts cannot be in the bay, blah, 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 when it's less than or equal to 25 feet. Okay. So I'm going to do this in red because it cannot be... It has to be less than or equal to 25. So 25 is going to be somewhere over here. Okay. 25. Uh, it says set up an equality and inequality and solve it uh, graphically to determine all points in time on the interval bit blah, 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 when tankers cannot be in the bay. Round all times to the nearest tenth of an hour. Okay. So when it, they cannot be in the bay, I know I crossed this out, but you know what? I'm going to challenge you a little bit. When the water is less than or equal to 25. Some of you can tune me out at this point. So basically, I want to know from here, this point to right here, this point, and this point to this point. I want to know what that is. Okay. So this one, when I look at it, it's going to be a little bit less than 6. Um, I would need to use my graphing calculator here and solve it. Uh, but here's how you do that. Okay, so we want to go y equals, and we want to put the equation into the graph. So we know that our a is 7. They already told us that it's a cosine graph, so I'm going to write 7 cosine. Um, they also are telling, oh, we just found out that the b is pi over 6, so I'm going to write pi over 6. Um, we know that we're going to put like an x, or in this case a t, next to it. Um, and then we know that our midline right, which is our C is 29, so I'm going to put plus 29, okay, let me just clear this up a little bit, this is pi over 6t plus 29, all right, um, and we want to see when this is less than or equal to 25, and the reason why is because it says it's less than or equal to 25, so what I'm going to do is use my graphing calculator and figure out what those points are, ask me if you have any sort of interest remotely whatsoever. Okay, this question right here. Hello, good morning. Uh, this question right here, the height of a yo-yo above the ground can be well modeled using the equation. All right, so I'm going to ask you at this point to pause the video and try this question yourself, um, and then we will regroup and figure this one out together. Thank you. Okay, so at this point, you should have, like, paused the video. Um, 
I just drew this while the video was paused, so that's probably why you didn't see it beforehand. But I want to identify what my A, B, whatever, you know, my A, B, and my midline shift is, right? So my A is right here. It's in front of the cosine. It's 1.75. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that down. A equals 1.75. That's my height. Um, the B is the number that's in front of the X, in this case, the T. So my B is pi. So I write that down. B is equal to pi. And then this number right here, the 2.25, is my midline, a.k.a. my C, based off of uh, the equation that we just had before. Um, but in class, we called it the D, the vertical shift. But our midline, in either case, is 2.25. All right, so it says determine the maximum and minimum heights that the yo-yo reaches above the ground. Show the calculations that lead to your answer. Um, so if you remember the formulas that, or if you wrote down, hopefully, the formulas that we talked about over here, these formulas right here, um, this should be pretty easy to figure out. So what I mean by that is, it's asking us to find the maximum and the minimum heights, right? So for the maximum height, the way that we do it is, is we take our midline, which is equal to 2.25, and we add our height to it. So 2.25 plus 1.75. And if you can do the math in your head, great. If you can't, calculator will give you four feet as your answer for the max. For the min, what we're doing is we're going the other way, right? So it's going to be 2.25. So from the midline, we're going down 1.75. So we're subtracting 1.75 from it. And so when you do that, you get 0.5 feet. So our max is 4 feet, and our minimum is 0.5, or a half foot. How much time does it take for the yo-yo to return to the maximum height for the first time? That sounds something about the period, right? So if you take... Remember, period is how long it takes to make a full cycle. So if it was at a max, it goes down and comes back up. That right there, this distance from here to here is a full period. Okay, That's how much time it takes. <sighs> so, um, oh look, we're given the B, right? So the B here is pi. So we're going to do the period is equal to 2 pi over, and our b is pi, so we're going to plug that in. It's 2 pi over b, so it's going to be 2 pi over pi, and the pi is just cancel out, so our period is equal to 2. Um, and it's good to label, like, units of time, so if I take a look over here, what's our units of time? Blah, 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 blah. It doesn't make sense to make it hours, because it's a yo-yo, right? So it's not going to come back up in an hour. Uh, it says time in seconds, so this is 2 seconds. Done. All right. Um, this is a really good one to check for understanding. So I'm going to pause the video here. You're going to do some problems and then use the Varghese Math website to check your work. Um, yeah. Later.